Okay, so we've been talking about the domain of a function, and we're going to introduce a, another rather difficult concept, the range of a function. And we're going to look at these graphically because basically the only way, the only nice way to determine range is from a graph. It's very difficult to determine the range of a function just from the algebraic definition. So let's talk about what domain and range are. The domain of a function is just the list of acceptable inputs or the list of x values that don't cause a problem. So the list of inputs or x values which are acceptable. Don't force us to divide by zero or take square roots of negatives or do anything else we're not supposed to do. Range, if domain deals with x values, the range of a function deals with the y values. It's the list of outputs or y values that you can expect to come out of a particular function. Now, I've got this rather tight uh, shot here in this video simply because I want to look at the textbook itself. So, as you can see, we're in section 1.3, page 87, looking at example number 9. The way you find domain and range of a function which is given to you in its graphical form is as follows. Starting with domain, all you do is you just imagine dragging or smashing each part of the graph onto the x-axis. So we're going to crush the graph onto the x-axis and see which part of the x-axis is covered by this crushed graph. Well, minus 2 isn't going to be covered because there's no dot there. We get as close as we can to minus 2, but there's nothing on, minus, nothing, nothing on the graph that's going to be smashed to minus 2. But everything up to minus 2 will be there. So, anything to the right of minus 2 is going to be in the domain and up to, here we have an x value of 3, so the value of the point here, x equals 3 on the x-axis, is going to be covered by this point. So the domain is going to be anything between minus 2 and 3, excluding minus 2, and including 3. So the way we'd write that for example number 9, part A, the domain is that we can have any x value between minus 2 and 3, including 3. Because when we smash the graph onto the x-axis, what we get is something like this. This is what the smashed graph looks like on the x-axis. Everything between minus 2 and 3 is covered. 3 had a dot had this point over it, and so there is going to be something smashed onto x equals 3, but there's nothing going to be smashed onto x equals negative 2. So that's why we exclude, oops, 
That's why we exclude minus 2 and include 3. So this is what the smashed graph would look like. Now if we look at the range, the range is very similar for this graph. We just smash everything onto the y-axis. So instead of crushing everything to the x-axis, we're going to push everything onto the y-axis and see what sticks and where it sticks. So our lowest y-value happens to be here. And so 1 is the lowest y-value, but it's not actually a y-value of the function. It never actually hits this point. So we'll exclude 1 but everything above 1, just above 1, is going to be included. The highest point, here we have a y value of 2, but here a y value of 3, that's higher, and the highest y value is here, of y equals 4. So when we smash this to the y-axis, 4 is going to be covered, and everything in between 1 and 4 is going to be covered by bits of smashed graph. So we have all y values are in the range, uh, excuse me, the range consists of all y values between 1 and 4 where we include 4 and exclude 1. So that's going to look like, uh, let me flip it over, that's going to look like the following. So the range is going to be that 1 is less than y, which is less than or equal to 4. And the smashed graph, if we're here at 5, 4, 2, 1, we have something covering 4 and we have parts of the graph that cover everything between 1 and 4, but the graph never goes over the y value, y equals 1. So this is what the smashed graph looks like if we smash this graph onto the y-axis. We get this as a result. So for this is the range, and the domain we said was everything between minus 2 and 3, and we only include 3, this is the domain and range for this graph. And we can do the same thing for part B. We've got a different graph that we're looking at now. So if we're trying to find domain, we're going to pull all the bits of this graph onto the x-axis and see what's covered. What's ever covered, that's the domain. So in this case, our leftmost value is minus 3, and we still have parts of the graph that are going to be covering everything from minus 3 to the right, and then we stop once we hit x equals 1. Once you hit x equals 1 and go past x equals 1, there's a bit of a gap. There's a gap until you hit x equals 3. And then once you hit x equals 3, you see a bit of the graph on x equals 3. And as you keep walking right, there's still graph to be found all the way for everything to the right of 3. So if we try to represent this, so minus 3 to 1, the domain kind of has two parts to it. We have one part at minus 3 to 1, including both endpoints. Then we skip over to until we hit the x value of 3. And then the graph can be found covering all the x values from 3 on to the right. So this would be 
written as that minus 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1 you can find the graph covering these x values or the graph covers these x values, the x values that are greater than or equal to 3. And if you want, the interval notation for this is minus 3 comma 1, or is that funny cup, that union, and then our leftmost boundary is 3, and we move all the way to the right, which is represented by a plus infinity, and infinities always get the uh, always get parentheses. So this is the domain of this particular function that they have graphed for us. To find the range, we're going to be smashing the graph onto the y-axis. Now, let's see. Our lowest y value is minus 1 here. And the graph looks to cover everything from minus 1 up to 1, including both endpoints. So that's one part of the range, from minus 1 to 1. This whole line here is just horizontal. So when we push all this stuff onto the y-axis, the only thing this is going to cover is y equals 4. That whole line just gets smashed to one point on the y-axis. So we represent that as follows. So we've got minus 1, 0, 1. Oops, didn't give myself enough room here. But if I kind of scale this a bit and call this 4, on 4, all we have is just a point. Nothing else. Just that entire line just gets crushed to a point on the y-axis. So the range is simply everything between minus 1 and 1 on the y-axis and, or I guess in this case the proper logical term is or, but I'm, I don't care whether you get that right or wrong, um, or y equals 4. In other words, you can find the graph, you can find bits of the graph on the y-axis anywhere from minus 1 to 1, or you can find bits of the graph at y equals 4. And in interval notation, this is as follows. To represent just a point, you can either do, you know, 4 to 4, or if you want to get really technical, you could represent this as a set, as a singleton, a set with one element, just 4 in it. But these are rather difficult concepts, admittedly. But this is as much as um, we're going to get into them because I don't see it being of great importance that you have a true mastery of these concepts. There's, there's lots of other things I'd rather you know more than domain and range.